This is the Slip Ronnie rig. In my opinion, it's the most efficient and effective carp fishing rig. You can use it on either a pop-up or a wafter presentation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tie it. In order to tie this rig, you need a number of components, starting off with a 20 pound semi-stiff skin link. Then you need a large sinker, a Ronnie swivel, a size six floater claw hook, 30 pound braided shock leader, an eight mil bait screw, a small bit of shrink tube, and a wafter or pop-up of your choice. First up, take a length of 20 pound semi-stiff skin link. I'll take around eight or nine inches, but I can change that depending on what I'm fishing over. If I'm fishing a gravel spot on the edge over a really tight baited area, I'll shorten that right down. If I'm casting bright singles around and I'm not really sure what the bottom is, I'll lengthen that. So it all depends on what you're fishing, but eight to nine inches is a good starting point. First up, I'll slide a large sinker onto the hook link material. At one end, I'll tie quite a large figure of eight loop knot. This will be used to connect the rig to my main line, and it's also gonna act as a anti-tangle sleeve, which is why I tie quite a big one, because it provides quite a stiff area that will help kick the rig away from the lead. At the other end, I'll attach a Ronnie swivel, and I'll attach that as well with a figure of eight loop knot. That's the boom section done. Very straightforward, very simple. I'll maneuver the slider so that it is about a third of the way down the hook link. By doing this, when the rig kicks away, you'll have a bit of a loop where the first section's falling quicker and the last bit falls away a little bit slower. By having this loop, it means that any direction the fish comes from, there's movement for that rig to fly back into the fish's mouth. The fish approaches that rig from head on and the rig's completely straight and kicked away. When it sucks in the bait, there's no movement for that rig to fly back into the fish's mouth. By having a little bit of a, little bit of a loop, it's ready to pounce and can actually fly back and have that movement back into the fish's mouth. So that's important. Right, now I'm gonna show you how to attach the hook. This is where the Ronnie becomes a slip Ronnie. So to tie the slip section, I'll pass a double over section of Brady shock leader through the eye of the hook. The reason I use Brady shock leader is because it's so supple, it allows for real natural movement of the hook bait, but you can really use any soft braid. I then attach an eight mil bait screw. If you're using a hook bait that requires you to floss, then you can attach a, um, a bait swivel at this point. I'll then pass all that over the hook point and attach that in place with a knotless knot. In order to secure that in place, I'll then with the tag ends, tie a couple of granny knots to hold everything tight. I've done it before where I've not done this, not to put the granny knots in, and I've actually had coots pull the hook bait off the rig, so it's quite important you secure that in place. I'll then pass a small bit of shrink tube over the eye of the hook. This will be used later to secure the hook to the Ronnie swivel. I'll then push the Ronnie swivel through the eye of the hook, and this is now attached to the rig. I'll pull up down the shrink tube over the eye of the hook and the Ronnie swivel and steam that in place. And that rig is now ready to go. All you need to do is attach your hook bait. If I'm fishing a wafter like I am now, then I won't put any putty on the knot. If I'm fishing, it's a pop-up, and I need to counterbalance the weight of the pop-up, I'll put a little bit of putty on the knot of the figure of eight that's attached to the, uh, to the Ronnie swivel. Now, the reason I think that this rig is so effective is for a number of reasons. The first is it allows you to change the hook really quickly without having to tie a whole new rig up. Sharp hooks are the most important thing when it comes to rigs. So being able to change the hook very, very quickly and always be fishing with maximum sharp hooks, yeah, that is a very important aspect. The next aspect as to why this is such an effective rig is that swivel motion. You need that rig to be able to swivel around and that hook point to be going bottom lip of the fish at a moment's notice. And there's nothing quicker to doing that than a swivel. Some people will argue that a coated braid is just as fast. And whilst I agree with them that it's just as fast with one rotation, once it goes past one rotation, it becomes strangled, that coated braid. And that's where I think it, it lets itself down. Sometimes I think when the fish sucks in that hook bait, it's not actually the first time that that hook turns round. It's maybe the second or third that it'll actually hook the fish's mouth. You've got to imagine that when that fish is feeding, there's so much turbulence going on, so much suction of water, that that rig is spinning like that as it goes in. And sometimes that first rotation isn't enough to, to hook hold some flesh. And if you're fishing with just a, an uncoated braid, it won't quite hook hold as you, uh, as you intend. So having that swivel for free continuous rotation improves your chances of actually nicking a part of the fish's mouth. And finally, there's that slip D element. If you're fishing a standard Ronnie where the, the bait is directly on the shank of the hook, everything's happening too quickly. That hook's being pulled around too fast. And sometimes you get funny hook holes on the edge of the mouth of the fish. When I first started fishing a Ronnie, I'd fish it on the shank and I'd probably lose three to four fish in 10. 
Obviously, that's a terrible hook to land ratio. And a lot of the fish that I did land, they'd have really, yeah, not desirable hook holds. By having this slip element, it actually delays that that initial swivel is taking place once the hook's further back in the fish's mouth, improves hook holds, improves your hook to land ratio. And when I changed over to this rig, the next fish I lost was bite number 50. So I went from losing about 30% of the fish I was hooking to less than 2%. So is that right? 2%? Yeah. For me, everything about this rig points into the fact that it's super efficient, super effective. It's a rig that is my go-to pretty much anywhere, be that in England, in Europe, stalking, casting rods out of distance. Every time I'm fishing, it's the first rig I turn to and it's not let me down yet. I don't think I'll be changing anytime soon.